Can you put me through to the uh, White Moon Stores, Sarah Estes owner? Sure, it's Sheriff Longfellow from the Sheriff Department, Matawam Cave. Thank you, Denise. Sarah, it's me. You alone? Good. So we've got three people coming, driving on up to the Carstairs place, just as you thought they might. Looks like Alice Devereaux is sending some friends in, as we suspected. Uh, two men, a woman and a dog, that's what Dawson said. Yeah, well, it could be worse. I know, I know. Well, like we discussed before, it's better that it isn't the police. No, no, Dawson saw them drive past. He doesn't know anything, of course. Anyway, I thought I should warn you just in case. They might stop in at your place. You're kind of the last to uh, hope, if you know what I mean. Sure. We both knew that moving Winter's car was going to be a long shot. But I just guess I hoped that they'd think it was a straightforward disappearance. I guess not. No. It's a mess, I agree. Look, it's not your fault and it sure as heck isn't mine. That damned Carstairs woman, if she hadn't been messing around with things. I know. Well, look. I'll come up as soon as I'm finished here. I'll bring the shotgun, just in case. Uh-huh. Look, Sarah, your people, I don't want them involved with this any more than they already have been. They've been through enough. Oh, no, no, no. Uh -huh. I'm keeping my boys out of it. Particularly Dawson. He's far too interested as far as I'm concerned. No, no. But if he is involved, then, well, I'll take care of that myself. Yeah, I know. He knew the car stairs before. Problem is, half the town did. Well, Carrington, anyway. Sarah, there's something else. I don't know how to, um, say it. I dreamt about him again. His eyes. Do you think? Do you think he's coming down from the mountain? Do you think he senses something? Sure. Well, look, hopefully they'll be lucky. Hopefully he'll take pity on them the way he did on me, the way you did. We can look after them, right? Better with us than with those things. No, no, uh, I'm all right. I just, well, you know how it is. I better go, I'll see you soon. Oh, and Sarah, take care of yourself, all right? The Apocalypse Players present The House in the Woods by Gary Pilkington A Call of Cthulhu scenario Adapted for 7th edition by Joseph Chance. Copyright Grenadier Models and Chaosium. Starring Dan Wheeler as Assistant Professor Flight Lieutenant Charles Chuck Lohman. Jeannie Spark as Female Postmaster Natasha Roliova. Danan McAleer as local lobster mogul and supplier Alagash Bunyan, and Joseph Chance as everybody and everything else. So Chuck Loman, you'd had this extremely unusual experience of seeing something flying high uh, and uh, leaving a shadow 
as it passed the moon above you, and it had triggered some sensation of what had gone before for your good self, uh, and it had left you somewhat discombobulated as you were approaching these deep, deep woods and the journey ahead. Well, I am... Um, it's, it's shaken me up a little, but um, it's, uh, it's, not the sort of, it's not the sort of experience that I associate with... It's not, it's not the sort of vision that I associate with the uh, experiences I've had in the past. So, <laughs> I, I think um, I'm, I'm not... It's given me a bit of a shake, but I'm not too, not too disturbed. Yeah, yeah. Maybe just enough to knock you off that centre line that felt from it felt so good for a moment. Yeah, I just slow down a bit. And I, I, I lean over and I say, uh, "Hey, you look like you saw a flying cow. What's wrong with you? How about we uh, pull in here, get some boiled sweets, and uh, well, there is this does appear to be the last glucose. This does appear. <laughs> Every investigator's right. emergency backpack rationing. Sponsored by Lucasade. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Because um, we need the sponsors. Yeah. Yeah. So the, this is this does appear to be the last, uh, should we say, civilized um, building on the road that you are expecting to find, according to the directions that Rulyova has has garnered for you. So perhaps. And, and also supplies. It does seem to have a sign up saying supplies available. Uh, written in chalk in that classic handwriting style. And you've followed the instructions carefully. You've gone through Matawemke. Uh, and the last building on the left for a dirt track road which is oiled. So you're coming off the Tarm Academy, going onto an oiled road. Thank you, Stephen King, for that little piece of information. Uh, there's a there's the general store is on the left, uh, which is called White Moon Stores. There's a big a big cabin. As we pass the general store, I just say say one more thought. I I don't want to hold up our journey any any longer, but is it worth us get, getting a local opinion on goings on up here? Maybe. We don't want to speak to uh, Sheriff Longfellow. I understand why, why we might not to not want to do that, but maybe someone in this store here might know something about have seen some comings and goings. If this is the closest place to the house, is it worth canvassing a bit of local knowledge? You can feel him slowing down as he's saying this, but he's not. He's not sort of taking control. He's... I, I would be, uh, you know, I don't know if we want to draw more attention to ourselves than we already have. You know, asking about the specific place we're about to go to, I'd rather get a sort of unbiased opinion. But, hey, if we find the place confusing and we don't find anything, while you're, the day's young. While those two are having that conversation, um, Natasha, could you give me a spot hidden? Mm-hmm. Bang on. Yeah, nice. Um, you see that there's something hanging above the window sills of the cabin, um, and it looks like little, um, little. They, they almost remind you of poultices, sort of little pads wrapped with something quite tightly, and they're just hanging off. It's quite irregular, and there's there's two or three on one window and two on another window. As you, just as you're kind of, just as this conversation has happened, not something that you saw in the rest of the town. Like some sort of talismanic thing like an evil eye type thing yeah, that's what your instinct would well I mean yeah 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 it might be an old tradition it certainly reminds you of some of the old traditions in Russia mm-hmm. from your knowledge of such things mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. would you like to roll your occult I would uh, I'm saying this is happening in split second kind of stuff mm. yeah yeah it's a fail I'm afraid would you like to draw anyone's attention to these items as you're driving past Slowly. I think we've slowed yes. down to about 10 miles an hour now. I also, I might, I, might ask, um, I might ask Mr. Bunyan's opinion, because he's a, a, a local man steeped in local tradition. Mm. So I might say, um, Mr. Bunyan, what, yeah. are, what are these in the windows, the hanging uh, balls? Ah, uh, do you do re- do recognise them? I have not Do seen... I know, or what should I roll for that? I think you should probably roll local indigenous um, culture lore. 
Lovely. I put so many into that. So maybe you could, maybe you specifically could give me a no roll. Um, a, a what? Sorry. A no roll from education. It's sort of like your oh, smarts. Yeah. It's your smarts rather than your actual kind Locals, of study. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I'll give you. A, if it is something local, I'll give you a bonus die. Know. I'll give you a bonus die. Okay. Uh, but I'm looking for a. I'm looking for good success. I mean, I succeeded on the first one by. 15. I'll try again though if I've got a bonus die. Yeah, yeah. Try it, try it again to see what you get. It wasn't any better. So if if 15 under is, is the best, yeah, that yeah. looks like an old Indian thing. That looks like uh, right. First Nations habits. You're not too sure what it means, but you think that sometimes they burn things like that. The cultural right. practice. Some sort of pomander or yeah, yeah. It's like, like almost like a kind of herbs or. Yeah, mm. maybe to keep away bad smells or spirits. What what building was this on, by the way? So I this is this is white, just a cabin we're passing. White Moon Stores. It's and it's the last oh, building on the actual stores. And it's, it's almost kind of perfectly natural. So as Chuck sort of pulls in, he has to slow down to five miles an hour anyway. Yeah. Um, because he's just adjusting from flat road to quite a bumpy, stony, packed down, nicely packed down road. Yeah. So far. Hmm. Um, what's the decision? So I, I mean, I'm still talking. I, I sort of say, yeah, I, I translate that. And I just sort of say, yeah, yeah. I think I've seen them before. I think it's part of some Indian ceremony they have up here, Penobscot. Uh, yeah, I, I think I've seen them before. I couldn't tell you what it represents specifically. I'll be honest. But, Thank uh, you, Mister Bunyan. Yeah, Loman. Loman, are you, are you driving driving on, or are you intrigued? Well, You'd slowed, so I don't think we're going to be able to stop you if you want to pull in, but also we didn't say definitely do. I, uh, I, I'm I, I'm keen for some but, but local knowledge, but I am I'm not in charge. It feels like I'm sort of outnumbered in terms of the other two want to move on, so I'm, I'm going to carry on going. You, you, made, you, made, a, you made a good uh, speech, so I'll give you a persuade yeah. role, but I think it's opposed. Yeah. Thanks. Oh, okay. Uh, so if if you and Alagash can roll persuade, right? And Natasha oh, is just... is seemingly neutral about this. My persuade is very pretty good. Mine's very very bad. Um, I was going to see if I could push for something else. I'll, I'll give you in a true could wheeler I argue style. For charm breaking all of the rules. I'll give you like I do all the time anyway. But yeah, so yeah, if it's charm versus your best social skill, uh, Bunyan. Yeah, I'll give you any of best social skill versus best social skill. Yeah, that seems fair. <laughs> Thank you, that's very kind. Um, we, cha- I'll, go, I'll go for charm nature. because I am very charming. Yeah. Although I wasn't then. Well, no, I got a sixty-six on a sixty, and I failed mine. So, so you both failed. So it's sort of up in the air, but you're sort of rolling on at five miles an hour down the. And there's a sort of weird impasse in the car. Natasha, do you do anything? Uh, I think I think I'm unsettled by Alagash's uh, description of the mm. of the little the little pouches being First Nations things because I I, I recognise that as being a kind of you use it to ward off. Mm. Bad I've I've heard spirits. this. So I've, I've heard this conversation they've had. Yeah, yeah. So I feel I feel worried that we're we're walking into something bad, but I don't I don't think. There's anything that I do. I think we're just we're going in. As you press on. Yeah. One last thing that I say. Just we roll on this. Um, <laughs> <laughs> My wife loves you. Ms. Will Yolva, if I've obviously had that conversation. So if you're um, concerned, you think maybe these are uh, wards, um, protective uh, charms. But how about I stop off and see if we can they can loan us one. Or purchase one. That'd put your mind at ease. <laughs> I just laugh a lot. <laughs> yeah, like they'd sell something to ward some spirits to a couple of tourists. Uh, oh, you can go and ask if you want. Well, m- me and Miss Ruliova may be a couple of tourists, but one of us ain't. Hi. I ain't stopping to buy some weird little... Hey, if you if it'll make you feel better, sure I could ask him. Okay, I mean, what can we lose? Y- I, yes. I don't think there's any harm. Uh, All right, pull in here. 
maybe I could do with another uh, another couple of lines just in case we find a good fishing hole. And <laughs> Thank you, breaks. Mr. Bunyan. Right here we go. I think yeah, that's right. I think that's a good idea. I'll just pull in here. You're slightly oddly about twenty yards up the dirt, <laughs> the oiled dirt track. But there's, I'm going to reverse up. But there's but there's a there's a perfect place to stop there. <laughs> the door catches me and I get run out. And actually, weirdly, it's quite comforting to know that the car is sort of away from the road. Mm. Yeah, I'm going to wander back like it's a second thought, just like fishing bag over the shoulder. All shop. three of you heading in. I I, I don't mind uh, waiting in the car, Algash. If you think I think that's perhaps. a good idea. Yeah. Yes. Is it worth them? Um, I, I I agree with you. You don't want to draw attention to what the fact we're going up to the cabin, but. Is there something you can maybe ask them that might garner some information about... What sort of thing? Maybe if they've seen any comings and goings in this direction. Right, right. Uh, maybe yeah. you could say, is it, is it, have they had a lot of trade recently? Has it been busy? Don't see many... About that? You know, do you get a lot of people like me coming up here to go fishing? Yeah, has it been you, quiet recently? That kind of thing. Right. I think well, keep I will the engine stay. warm. And then buy one of those little lavender balls in the window. Yeah. So the car's stopped at last. And uh, Bunyan, you get out. Oh, do you take Buster with you? Yeah. Well, Buster here needs to take a leak anyway, so I... Uh... Come on, boy. Well, keep the engine warm. I'll get us some snacks. And I, um, I, I lift my uh, fishing gear on my shoulder and plod back towards the... Uh, the, the shop. Maybe I will get one of those uh, little bundles, whatever you dismissively call them. Uh, stretch me legs as I turn Irish. So you get, because obviously you're, the, the, you're 20 yards. I mean, why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you? Especially after the conversation at the police station. Um, yeah. You're 20 yards or so above the actual White Moon stores. Uh, and, and, as, and as you're heading up, presumably Buster just sort of rushes off into the woods. And you do get yeah, yeah. You, you get that That's sense it. of the edge of the wilderness. I mean, obviously you're still mm. on this oiled, oiled road. Yeah, boy, don't go too yeah. far. The the woods are slightly wilder. You can already feel that beyond. Um, but you kind of, it's quite a welcoming sight. This uh, this White Moon stores. They've done a good job. Mm. You feel. But there, you can now very clearly see all these pulses. These couple of burnt ones on this side. Yeah. Mm. Can I um? Mm, yeah, it's like a the last the last outpost for five thousand miles or something, isn't it? Um, well, it, fe- it feels a bit like that. Even I mean, perhaps especially to you because you you do understand from here on it, it it'll be the it'll it'll be the woodsman from here on it. There's a lot of bodies buried out past this place. Uh, not that well, I assume. Uh, that was uh, the west was one. Can I, yeah. I'd like to um, get a, if I can get a closer look at the poultices before I enter the shop. Is that? Yeah, yeah. You could, you could, you could. Yeah. Do you want to sneak on up over to one, or do you want to just kind of walk over? No, I think I want to make it clear if anyone's watching that I'm genuinely interested. Um, I'm not going to do anything, you know, dismissive yeah. with them. I'm going to have a. So, yeah. so you walk along the edge of the road. Buster kind of falls in behind you, wagging his tail merrily, having done his business. Your boy. And, um, yeah, you could have a little look at the, I mean, the closest one is the, the one closer to the front. The, the, there, there are these two other windows on this side of the big cabin. Yeah. So it's a beautifully made, heavy beam cabin. Cabin. Mm. So now, from this side, you can see that there's another, there's another couple of windows uh, away from the entrance. And they also have the same uh, packed things and you've seen that a couple of them have been burnt uh, mm. and perhaps they get perhaps they get lit at night does it seem random or is it just like there's a lot hanging outside each house and, and they... you get a very sweet smell from it a mixture of tobacco and something else mm. do you have a natural world skill I mean, I'm quite I mean, you're a bit of you're a bit of a woodsman aren't you I am, yeah, but I don't know if natural world is what I sort of assumed that was more sort of the science of the natural world. I don't have very good natural world, yeah. no. I can roll it anyway. Yeah, may as well. We might just get a miracle. I got a two. <gasps> I've I've got ten. Game one d ten for a start. So add <laughs> add from one to ten to that. Yeah. 
What's that rule, Joseph? Is that a, is that a house rule or is that? Yeah, I suppose it's, it is an experiment, uh, experimental house rule. I'm I, I'm I'm not going to keep doing it. I don't think it's just it's one of these ideas that I try for this one. Um, the you know some of those skills are so low to start, and like a ten percent chance. So I'm only going to do it for anything that you only have ten or or below. So like the one percent psychology, right? Uh, no psychoanalysis. Uh, so then, if you roll that zero to five magic extreme success, then you know to counter the fumble at ninety five to one hundred. Uh, then I'll give you a D10 bonus, but only on those skills. Mm. And then you've got a bit of in-game progression, oh, okay. should you be lucky enough yeah. to survive. Yeah, yeah, it's nice. Yeah. Um, what did you roll? Like it. Um, for your game? Well, I rolled... Oh, oh, wait, I'll roll my 10, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was just listening. Uh... Oh, I rolled a 7. Sweet. So I get a 7. So that's 17 on natural roll. Yeah, yeah, you've impressed yourself. Um, um, you you're pretty sure Ooh. you're pretty sure that uh, so there's tobacco, there's sage, yeah. and there's something else, uh, and uh, you can't quite pin it down. But you know you've smelt someone's it. Someone's been somewhere. smudging. Yeah, yeah, but it's it. tobacco, yeah. sage, and something else, uh, and like sage is for is for good is for good health. Uh, yeah. So maybe this whole kind of positive warding thing isn't such a crazy thought. You could reach up and and look at one very clearly. But obviously you would be potentially seen through the window. Or you could just kind of look at it from where you are. I think I'd, I'd like to lean up. Yeah. I'm not hiding hiding the fact I'm having a look at it, I don't think. Because I imagine I'll be inquiring about them anyway. So you see that it's quite intricately made. It's kind of, it's been sewed up. Uh, as well as sort of, initially from a distance, you just thought they were sort of clumped together. But you can see that actually they've been, they've been wound with a pattern as well. Uh, and as I say, these uh, these ones look, look like they've been actually lit, uh, and there does seem to be a wick within them. Mm. Okay. But there's a very strong smell. That sage comes through, very, yeah. very strong, and also the tobacco. And there's still this something else that you can't quite work out what it might be. Smudging. Okay. Well, I'll um. Yeah, I think I'll. Uh, I don't have a lead for Buster. Because he doesn't need one. Well, actually, as you... Uh, I mean, are you going to go around the front? Or do I? Um, yeah, I think so. I'm not uh, making any... Uh... You see that there's a there's a water bowl put out uh, ah. for, for animals. Uh, it's quite a big one. So, like, potentially it would be for horses, too. Oh, right. But, yeah. Horses. But, um, yeah, there's, there's, a, there's a big old bowl of water there. It doesn't, doesn't look too nasty. And, and he kind of goes over and, and licks away at that. Uh, Boy Buster, stay here. Have yourself a drink. Yeah, nice. And then you you head in? I approach, yeah. I head in, assuming the door's open. Oh, yeah. Well, it looks like uh, it looks like there's a sign up on the window. So you, uh, you sort of climb up the steps uh, and yeah. uh, and you have a look at the White Moon stores. Yeah. As you get around to the front door, there's a sign up saying, back in five minutes... Right. It's about what let's say you left at three forty five, five forty five, there's probably an hour and fifteen of daylight left. Good daylight. We drove past uh, a couple of yeah. Yeah, yeah. Five five forty five. So like maybe well, maybe there's a sort of hey. six o'clock closing time or maybe that's I wanna do uh I wanna do a little spot hidden, just like scan the road around me, see if I can see anyone heading up. Otherwise I'm just gonna walk in. I'll I'll open the door Prop it open. I'm not going to make a, a mystery of the fact I'm there. I'm just a customer. You know, it's relaxed. Five minutes, we'll be back or whatever. You do a you do a scan around, and um, no, there's nothing untoward. No one seems to be watching you. And as you turn and put your hand out, the door just pulls open about six inches, and you can see a woman's ah. a woman's face through the through the crack. Um, hey, darling. She's a mixed race Native American woman. Uh, ah. She. She looks at you uh, with, you know, not she's she's not hostile, but kind of curious. Says, "Can I help you, Sam?" <laughs> yeah, yeah. I I think you might be able to if that, if it's not too much bother. I got my fish and stuff here. I was just wondering. Uh, I was looking for a couple of supplies, you know, some snacks for. Uh, we're going up the the road trying to find a nice fishing hole, and 
You go, yeah, I was just you're going up to Cappy's place. You going up to Cappy's place? Huh? You going up to Cappy's place? No, we. I've heard of that. I think we might be going up that area. Yeah. Um, is there good fishing up there? Well, there's the lake up there. She looks at you like she doesn't quite believe what you're saying. Do you want to? Huh. Do you want to do a kind of? Do a persuade roll. Yeah. Or a yeah. Give me a give me a persuade. Persuade or check. Well, no, whatever you want. Because if you if you're fast talking. I'll go persuade. I think I'm not necessarily talking fast. I'm just trying to keep her attention and be like, "Hey, I'm I'm cool. I got a 17 on my uh, 60 persuade." So I'm saying, uh, "Hey, like, uh, yeah, I'm just I see it. You got any extra bait? But if not, hey, the guys in the car are just doing my head in a bit. I just like to have a breath." Oh, no, sure, I should get you some bait. No problem. She opens the door. Great. We're about to close up. Ah, sorry to disturb you. No, no, no. It's just that time. She's yeah. she's in her mid forties. She's quite short, uh, but mm. she's in her mid forties. She wears her ve hair very unfashionably. It's very long, very straight. Um, wow. Uh, she would be quite handsome were it not for a kind of thickness to the jaw. She's got quite a strong jaw. Um, mm. Well, no, she would be handsome were it not for this th thickness to the jaw. But you feel like you could take her very seriously. She's a uh, She's, yeah, she's got gravitas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a whole load of things in here. Tons of stuff, like cages and... Wow. Uh, and what I'm going to do and... from the off is just have a little browse. I'm going to pick up a couple of random things. Probably from, like, I imagine they'd have the fishing stuff nearest the counter. Oh, very much so. A um, couple of lines. I make my own flies, so I'm not looking for anything like that. But I'm going to pick up a couple of lines, some, like, spare hooks, and just say... Uh, Ah, you know, while I'm here, um, got any jerky or any, uh, I mean, I usually make my own. I, I do, uh, the lobster fishing down Main, uh, down Bangor way. Uh, do we ever supply you? <laughs> lobster jerky. I don't think I've ever seen you before, sir. Ah. So, yeah, it's, uh. You, you feel like you're in well, the presence of a pretty, bunion. a pretty good poker player. She could be telling you the truth. Yeah. Bun Bunyan's lobsters. Oh, I know. We're alone around here, but oh, I know I'm the not name. Sure we... Yeah, yeah, that's my company. Well, it's my son's company. I uh, I handed it over. I'm just a fisherman these days. Could you give me a spot <laughs> hidden roll? I'd love to, because I feel like otherwise my improv will last forever. <laughs> it won't be particularly interesting. It's delicious. Uh, um, I'm looking up if ooh. lobster jerky is a thing. That is revolting. Uh, it fucking better be. <laughs> it is now. I know, I know salmon jerky is a thing, absolutely so I figured lobster rancid. jerky must be. Um, 60 oh on a spot hidden 55 i'm gonna spend five luck yep do it fuck it so you see a handsome dark bearded man in a lumberjack shirt in a in a photograph mm. on the wall behind uh, and, you, ah. and you see a pretty looking native american woman in another photograph behind uh, and unless you're very much mistaken with your knowledge of the woods and the area you're pretty sure that's a sort of Quebecois-style gentleman. Mm. It's the way he wears his moustache twirled. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, this is, you know, they're, they're, these pictures are 30 years old. Probably 40 looks, years uh, old, actually. He looks remarkably like my ancestor, old uh, Paul Bunyan. You'd have heard of him, at least. Uh, who's that <laughs> in the picture? Well, you're related to Mr. Bunyan, are you? Congratulations. Oh, yeah. That's my Go father. On, right, just... Oh, is it? That's my father, Tristan LaSalle. What was his name? Tristan LaSalle. Ah, Tristan Lassell. I don't know if I know that name. Great name. And who's that next to him? That's my mother. So is that all you'll be having? What was her name? Well, her name is White Moon. That's what we named the store after. My name's Istis. Oh, that's... Sarah that's Istis. That's beautiful. What's your name, sir? Oh, Allagash. Allagash Bunyan. Bunyan, after the Bunyans, of course. Yeah, of course, of course. She smiles, but you get the strong impression that neither, she's not going to hide the fact she doesn't really believe you. You, oh, you, well, get the, right. you get the Not very strong impression do. she's telling the truth. Yeah. Okay, uh, well, I got this stuff. Uh, I tell you what, have you got any of those... Um, you don't have any of those poultices, those pomanders you got hanging outside the store. Um, what What is it you use them for? They smelled so delicious on the way down. and They, they sort of brought me back to my childhood. I, You know, I got a little engine in me, and uh, we used to go out camping, and... Uh, We'd, we'd have these experiences. It smelled a bit like their incenses they have. And uh, Sorry, uh, I, I don't mean to offend. I just I don't know enough about the culture. But uh, I don't suppose you could tell me what's in that. 
It's the tobacco. I got a bit of tobacco. I got a bit of sage. It was so interesting. Is it a religious thing or? She brings the sales book up with a heavy, hmm. with a with a with a heavy drop, but not in a kind of dramatic way, but in a but in a in a sense to sort of say, okay, you've got my attention, and we'll just cut back to the car. Yeah. <laughs> Nat Natasha, oh. you're looking out of the window. Uh, when you see Rasputin. No. About, Fuck's sake. <laughs> about 90, what? getting really weird. About 90 metres away. Oh. Closer than 100, but not definitely not 50. Maybe 75. What are you going to do? Uh, let out a little scream. Well, sorry, you haven't lost any sanity, so you don't have to do that. So you're, I think, you're I in think control I would of your say, senses at this point. I, I think I would get the attention of a flight lieutenant assistant professor Charles Lohman and say miss can you can you see that figure standing over there uh, can I so you you look over and for a split second you think you can see a very very tall man with very very long hair and then you realize that it's just the way the moss is hanging off the broken bough of a, of a dead tree can you see anything so I can't see anyone else no you can't, see, you can't see any people there. But it does look like a person. Uh, the more you look at it, it almost looks as if it's got two kind of pinpoints for eyes just at the top. Um, but you're pretty sure it's just moss draggled, bedraggled over a, a, a big old... Miss Rulyova, I, I can't see a person out there. I, the tall I can man. See can you see the tall, the tall man with the dark it's... hair? Can you see uh, him? Uh, <laughs> I think that's just a tree. I, uh, I don't know. Maybe the moment maybe he your says eyes. that, the moment he says that, you begin to realize maybe it is just a tree. Maybe your eyes ain't that great. Would you, would you like me to get out of the car and go look for you? Uh, no, no. I'd be more than happy to. No, I. I'm sorry. I, I think. Are you feeling all right? Do you, do you want a, something to eat or drink? Is there? Yes, something you need? Perhaps, Cigarette, perhaps? perhaps? Uh, yes, uh, yes. I think I need something to, to settle my nerves. And perhaps uh, um, uh, um, and perhaps the two of you deliberately talk about quieter things or less uh, heavy things for a time. Mm -hmm. uh, but back in the back in White Moon stores, Sarah Istas says, Well, I don't rightly know what you're here for, sir, but I, I'm very happy to sell you something. You'd like a little That'd bit of the great. mixture? Well, that's sure. You know what it's for. Oh, you, got you said this, you said you got a little bit of engine in you. Yeah. Well, it's on uh, my mother's side, but it's gone way back. I'm afraid to say. Mine I... too. Mine too. Really. Well, wow. as you know, she says pointing. Yeah, of course, of course, of course. Um, yeah, I tell you what, I um, the smell of it just brought something out of me, and I felt protected. Like I, as I walked under it, I felt this. I don't know. I, I saw some crazy-looking guys on the way up here. Have you, you not been having any trouble with uh, outsiders? You here for that, Professor? The one that's gone missing? Oh, why? I, I might be looking for a professor. Well, let's say that you uh, you buy this here tackle and bait anyway, mm. and, I'll, and I'll sell sell you a couple of the uh, the white baneberry packs too. Here. And she hey. gets a, she gets a little bag and she puts some white berries into it with some leaves, and then the sage mm. that you recognise and some broken up tobacco and she and she pulls it into a tight cord, and she puts it down yeah. and she gives you an exorbitant price for it, um, mm. probably twice what it's worth. You're thinking, which uh, I pay because I don't yeah. want to offend her. To which she nods. Uh, but uh, mm. I say again, uh, don't suppose you've been having any trouble with uh, any odd sort of out of town is up this way. That professor came in here, Mr. Winner, is that right? Did he? He came in here looking for supplies. I sold him some uh, some beef and some beans and some potatoes. Mm. Just food stuff. They didn't need no. Uh, they didn't need no logs up there. It's, it's plenty. Uh. Plenty laid up by that old Carrington, I can tell you that. Of course. How did he seem? Was he, uh, did he seem friendly? He seemed upset? Or He didn't uh, seem too well, I gotta be honest. There was a sheen on his brow, if you see what I'm saying. Looked like he might have had a little, 
been running a bit of a temperature. Bit of a fever. Ah, okay. That's good to know. I mean, hey, I don't know the fella. I'm just uh, following up for a friend who doesn't really trust the uh, the local authorities, you know? So I'm, uh, I'd appreciate your discretion in that regard, of course. Uh, but, uh, yeah. You speak tell to you the... what, uh, yeah. you ain't seen a... Uh, I mean, I've only seen the guy once, but I also have seen the car a few times. So I'm going to really sort of push my inquiry here because I feel like she's blocking me every time I say it slightly. And I'm just going to say, uh, is there a thing with the, you know, what's the local get up around here? I see this guy in the corner. He's got a big fucking, uh, he's got his collar up. He's got this, this long greasy hair. Uh, is that the fella? Is he local? Is he uh, off on one, or is, he, is that the local thing? She leans across the counter in a conspiratorial fashion, the first time that she's ever sort of looked a bit more like she's willing to divulge. And she says, I don't know what you've got yourself involved with, Mr. Bunyan. Not a way. <laughs> but I'm pretty sure that whatever you're up to has nothing to do with whatever Professor Winner was up to. If you see what I'm saying. I don't know about any men in trench coats looking for Allagash Bunyan, if that's what you say your name is. <laughs> but I do know that that man wasn't so well. and I told him he shouldn't spend too much time on his own. He seemed dead set on that, so it's not my job to interfere. Of course. I also know that my grandfather always said, you don't go walking in that part of the woods. Not without looking after oh. yourself. So that's why I'm selling you this here little something. I appreciate that. Thank you. Cause I don't Well I don't I don't think it's I don't think it's right, you know? To just leave no. a person without something like that. It's much appreciated. And uh hey, don't you worry, uh I don't have that much in common with the man, but uh and I'm sure that we're just checking up on his safety, like. But uh, I tell you what, on my way back down here, after I've burned a couple of these uh, lovely pomanders of yours and fell all safe up by the house, um, let's talk about maybe getting some uh, getting some Abunia's lobsters in here. You could sell them to the passers-by. They'd love it. Maybe we've got a little ice house out back. That might work. Hey. Excellent. I, well, can te- I, I can tell you it doesn't work on the Quaya Simane to Aha. Aha. I tr- I I mean I don't know what it means, so I'm just gonna laugh and nod as if I do. That's what Say, we that's <laughs> what we call the bad spirits. Say again? The ba- the the, the what? bad the bad spirits. But how do you say it? The manaheto. Malaito. Thank you. You've been most helpful. I'm sorry for keeping you open longer than you wanted to be. Not at all. You've made a good sale. And she well, bids you, we'll she, see you on the she, way back through. She walks you to the door. At the door, she opens it and she, you see a look in her eyes of regret, maybe? She says, I don't suppose you want to buy any guns? Oh, uh, I sort of, uh, I look at her and I just, um, Against my better instincts, I just pat the side of my um, my fishing bag and just say, uh, "I think we should be okay." And she wordlessly closes the door. Um, uh, boom. While he's coming back to the car, you two uh, have been having this quieter conversation. What's 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 that been about? Uh, mm. Uh, r- r- roughly, what would you? What, what area might you have strayed into? It's fair to say that, having spent this much time together, I might have asked Ms. Rolio about what brought her to the United States. And I, I would have told him, uh, little as little as I could, that it, uh, I, that the uh, the revolution of 1917 had made my position as a Russian. Uh, intelligentsia member untenable and that I'd been in uh, Petrograd I'd been there uh, a, a woman of 
a woman of letters to a certain extent, uh, a private tutor for children of some of the more um, royal and noble families, uh, and that I had come into contact with uh, a, an infamous, a now infamous figure uh, called Rasputin, who had been uh, dazzling the court at the time with his magnetic personality. Wow. I think, um, it's, I, and I think it is on the word, the words "magnetic personality" that uh, Allegash ah, arrives. Talking about me again, <laughs> Oh, Mr. Allegash. I don't want to hold us up on this, but um, is it is it fair? Would I would I know the name Rasputin? Oh yes. Oh God. Yes. I... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, Fine. It's Twenty-four. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. Can I think I think it's fair, to, especially in your position as a as a yeah. gentleman yeah, yeah. of letters. I think mm. you'll have read the articles because they were yeah. they, they were around already. That's fairly astonishing. But he is dead. He is dead. I don't. I, twice, I think I have seen him now. Ah, uh, now this is this is information. I think as as she says that, could you give me an idea check with a bonus, uh, Professor Charles Lohman? Form of flight yes, lieutenant. that's very kind. I was going to try a feeble psychology check, but no, that would be lovely. An idea check with a bonus. Yeah, both exactly the same, just regular success. So, you think about the nature of that weird tree that now, now you've looked at it the way that you look at it now, you can't get it to look like the person again. Mm. But, but it's crude, but it could be a sort of weird version of a long-haired, massive monk. But also, it's something starting to niggle at you about why that might be triggered. So now I will take your psychology check. Or psychoanalysis with a bonus. Well, they're both very bad. Psychology is not quite as bad. Huh. It's starting that one. Oh! <laughs> that's, that's what we call a fumble. Is that, is that, the, is that the sweet spot? Yeah, yeah so, because my psychology is 10 and I've rolled a 98. Oh, mate. Could you could you give me the physical but non the physical but non verbal indication that you realise that you understand the situation fully within the context of being in a car with a person who you've only just met? So I don't know what what that might be, but it could be kind of verbal. But it could be. Uh, no, I, I I perfectly understand what I hadn't realised it before, but I know exactly what what Ms. Rolyova's problem is. What, what's and I know what's your exactly. celebratory gesture. What's your, how to fix her problem what, but what's your physical celebratory gesture as you realize I, I, I lean over and I put my hand on the back of her neck and lean towards her and say and say Miss Rulyova you're safe with Chuck you're safe with Chuck and I lean in <laughs> tilt my head a little bit too far to give her like a Matt Hancock kiss but slowly so she may have time to pull away I was not expecting that <laughs> Well, you asked for it. Yep. You asked for a physical reaction. <laughs> that was, That's how I've that read the fumble. situation. That's definitely how I've read the situation. Wow. Gosh. What? Is that all right for me to play <laughs> my fumble before, for you? <laughs> yeah, no, I, I was expecting like a celebration Gosh. rather than a, a dynamic oh. action forwards. <laughs> so I was thinking you went, or, or something like that. I was thinking like a single gesture. But no, you've, <laughs> you've gone full total fuck up. Can I ask what you rolled? Was it a hundred? I rolled a, ni- a ninety-eight, oh, but on man. a ten. On a ten. Okay, so he does this, and he's got a lot of charm. So I think I'm, what I'm going to give Chuck on this situation because it's such a lovely offer, <laughs> Genie, as Will Yoba. I don't <laughs> think Dan's being pervy. Point one. Point two. I think that's important. Point two. I think you read it as well-intentioned, yes. and although he's not the best-looking guy, he's very charming. And I think he wants to sort of make things better, and everyone's stressed. No, he's, and, not, he's not very good looking, you're right. And, and you, you kind of get this vibe. He's got a kind of Lego look, you know. He's he's not unattractive, but he's just really like bland, Lego. sort of like. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like, you know, when you see those men, and they're like, they're they're kind of on paper, they're like tall, dark, like well built, chiseled jaw, but just like absolutely nothing. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. Lego jock. That's a great description. Is it, is it, and, I, and I'm sensing that both Natasha Rolyova and Jeannie Spark are recognising how much they're not into that. But 
but I think she's... One could argue, obviously. I think she would gently... uh, She wouldn't dismiss the gesture, but instead of leaning in for the kiss that Chuck is so obviously uh, (laughs) angling for, I think she would... uh, she would put her hand on the side of his face to, to both acknowledge the goodness of what he's offering, but also to go, no, thank you, and say, uh, thank you, Chuck. I do feel safe with you. And, and it's those words that I think Alagash's head kind of comes down, because you know those cars, are, that, you know, you have to kind of bend down to look into them, and, and that's what you see, Alagash, is this totally confused, beautiful moment of, of two very different people trying to express very different things interconnecting uh I, I just just as you've said this really quite good line about oh you're talking about me a magnetic personality and you really feel like something's been missed but i suspect for the interests of uh, moving forwards there's a, there's a bit of brushing off of, of that moment and uh everyone moves on uh i don't know what alagash is saying about what he's discovered in the other is there anything you're holding back I don't think there's any reason he would, because um, I think there was a connection with this one. But I think he's honest. He says, "Oh, they seem sort of weird about the place we were going." Um, apparently, uh, old uh, Jamesy, what the, what the fuck his name is, came in here himself. He was feeling a bit peaky. He looked a bit shiny, and uh, <laughs> but the whole area apparently they seem to be fucking slightly uh, on edge about. Um, she gave us a couple of those little charms that you saw hanging down by the window, but she seemed to be, to be honest, I mean, she, she, I tell you what, she rinsed me financially, but, uh, at the same time, it seemed like she wouldn't have given it to us unless she felt sympathy or pity or something. I got that impression that she was, uh, she thought we were heading to a dangerous place. Um, anyway, local, uh, well, everyone has their, uh. Their personal superstitions and yeah, you're quite right. Odd quite beliefs, right. and I, I say that, and I just sort of give uh, give Rulio over a little a little smile on that on that line, thinking it's a, a sort of comfort, comforting, sympathetic thing to say rather than a horribly <laughs> condescending thing. Ah, <laughs> uh, <hello>, Loman, <laughs> you're I such say, a ladies man. I'll get. I say we've uh, we've done we've done all we can here, and we should head up to that. Um, Head up to that cabin. Yeah, I got some more boiled sweets. Uh, I got us all a couple of magnums. <laughs> Classic. Fantastic. Great work, boys. The car The car starts up um, after a swift crank from a strong uh, wrist. And, <laughs> and, Lo- and Loman gets back in the car, confident. Uh, takes, <laughs> takes you up the first mile very smoothly. Uh, then the road starts to get a little bit rougher, and you draw another mile ahead. You draw even with, and it's slow going, you draw even with a place which has a, a crooked sign saying mm-hmm. Captain on it. Uh, someone has, has drawn a catfish on the bottom right corner of this sign, and the catfish is doing something indescribable for our viewers slash listeners. Uh, it's shitting. Like a catfish Ouroboros, or is it... Uh... It's just shitting. No, it's nothing too horrific. It's not indescri- oh. indescribable in the Lovecraft. Ah, so I'll describe it for <laughs> you. Very good. It's, it's shitting. <laughs> this is what it is doing. Uh, he's, and there's, he's, been he's some, there's been some scratching away at that, but clearly hasn't removed the, right. gra- the graffito. But it's not the, it's not the classic Scooby-Doo population one crossed out zero. No, it's the, sadly. You know, nice. It's just a catfish. But that's okay. the captain place, and actually there's some music coming from it, from a from a, a cranky old wireless is the expression I'd like to use. I'm not sure mm. if that's believable. Please Even do. this high in the woods, you wouldn't have thought he'd get a signal, but maybe. Maybe so on some high ground. Can I just double check? We are in the hills. As we're now. driving past. Did um, I, I was sort of saying that you were stopping uh, briefly yeah. to, to mm. give it its due. Sorry, Alagash. But did Loman and Rulyova give me the lowdown on what they discovered about Cappy? Oh yes, in Captain. those two, I think that's that's actually I was going to go back to the excellent question. In those two miles, and indeed in this whole journey, has anyone held back any information that they've found? See, I don't think I've got any information I would hold back, so I don't think I have. So the squatters, um, the no. squatters' information you've shared with them. Yeah. So, I so am... yeah, that's a good point actually. I I will have told you that I've heard on the grapevine via 
what I was doing at the time. But there were squatters in this place. Since have been moved on or uh, you know left sharpishly, regardless. But I, I mean, I don't, I don't see that as anything out of the ordinary. So, um, yeah. I think maybe I might not have shared all of the details from the note that I found in the apartment, just because I don't understand it myself yet. Yeah. I think I would have, I would have shared the knowledge that. Um, Oh God, what's her name? Uh, Anastasia Carstairs. <laughs> Anastasia, yes. Anastasia uh, had been... Dr. Carstairs. Sorry, Dr. Carstairs. You're mm. absolutely right. Dr. Anastasia Carstairs had uh, had, had success with her her treatments um, on winters, but stuff about the, um, the blue-eyed god. You haven't mentioned that. I've not mentioned that. Cause Good. I don't know the relevance of it myself Good. yet. Good to know. I mean, considering the fact that the two of you have... You and Charles have definitely shared that with Alagash regarding the medical notes. That does get mentioned in the mm. medical notes. So. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> uh, I I think I've I haven't held anything back. I may have. Well, I certainly won't have um, given anything away uh, about the, any of it which might have particularly affected me. But in terms of fact, I, I think I've been really upfront about everything. Mm. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. Um, Good. Okay. Right. Well, so you can hear some music spilling forth from the the captain place. So this is uh, Zeke Zeke Captain's place then. So is it worth? Um, I mean, I don't want to keep stopping our journey. I'm I'm keen to get to that cabin as much as you are, but I think maybe Captain, maybe he's just crazy old drunk. Yeah. I mean, it sounds like he's probably both. Uh. Um, Joseph, can I check? Because I feel like I might know Cappy if I, but if I don't, that's fine. He's just like a. It's a big, it's a big area up here. It's a, it's yeah. Penobscot's too big to know. If he was on the river, you okay. definitely, you know, characters like this. He's drunk yeah. too much. He's probably so I fried. Get, I get the general feel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of like, mm, I've, I, I know Has is like this. It's a, they, it's a uh, I get my shot. local boys to cuckoo them. They go in, they fill them up with liquor, and they take over the area. No, I'm joking. Um, I, I, I don't know what we're going to learn from some fucking madman. I it's mean, a, it's I've a one, seen a cow jump over the moon too, but... Uh, what's the, what's the expression? It's a, it's a one up, two down with an outhouse. That's what it is. It's, it's, not, mm. it's not big, this little place. It's falling apart. We might as well have a look while we are here so can I just double check with you uh, are the two of you getting out of the car uh, yeah I am certainly yeah, yeah will yeah. you over and Banyan out of the car Loman you're ready to go you li you've literally just kind of come to a, to a halt um, oh are you going to take are you going to take yeah. Buster with you mm, yeah give him a little whistle a little he, tu he tucks in close at that whistle I assume mm, yeah, yeah absolutely yeah. Uh, and are you sneaking? Right, are you I... sneaking over to this window? You can see the light, and you can hear music. I, Alagash isn't. Yeah, he's not particularly one for sneaking, I suppose. But if they can get a look inside without being yeah, I don't. I don't himself. necessarily mean um, <laughs> sneaking in the silent movies. Yeah, <laughs> exactly, exactly. Uh, I mean, as in, are you using your natural uh, survivor's instincts to not be heard? Would you like yeah. to do a stealth roll, or would you like to just walk over? I, well, I'm in, I'm in two minds. I think for Alagash, he's well aware quite a lot of these folks, especially the ones who uh, tend to sup on their own uh, moonshine. Uh, you know, it's a toss-up. You don't want to know you're there necessarily, but uh, <laughs> you don't want to get a shotgun blast through the door either. Do you know what? Can you give me Buster's stealth roll? Uh, I think Buster's Ooh, got a. Yeah. I think Buster's got a stealth. I'm thinking sixty-nine. What? Easy. Yeah. Oh. Family show. Come on. <gasps> I wouldn't call it a family show. <laughs> Sorry, you don't know uh, what's coming, but fair. I know what's coming. He's, he's not the youngest of dogs, but he's well trained. Yeah. Um, so I think it's good. Um, I rolled a 16 for Buster. Sweet. So Buster kind of creeps he's creeps up ahead, fox -like. smelling around on the on the dirt track, and um, yeah, he seems very happy with his work. Uh, mm. And I'm very happy. I think the two of you approach without making too much noise. Uh, and and look through the window at the scene within. Uh, and you see, lying on the couch, 
Ezekiel Cappy Captain pretty much passed out, you're, you're fairly sure. He's got a, a white string vest on, braces, filthy wide leg trousers. Oh, so we're that close to the house. Okay, cool. He's, he's lying on his side. He hasn't seen you. Uh, he doesn't even seem to be awake. I'm, I'm just going to say to... I think we've got a bit of an understanding, but I'm just going to say to Natasha, like, look at the fucking sin, the guy. Like, what's he going to tell us about anything? I don't know. You know, we say a name to him. He'll fucking imagine something out of his head. I, I, you know, I, <laughs> I... I think it's fair to say that uh, the two of you, at this point, Alagash and Natasha, you both see a, a somewhat reluctant uh, Chuck Loman coming out of the car. If that's all right with you, Dan, I'm just going to sort of suggest that that's... Like, you're, not, you're not engaging. In fact, if anything, you're specifically getting out of the car to make it clear that you actually think that it's a bad idea to go in... <laughs> To the house, um, but you're doing that sort of lingering by the car door thing to make that present, if that's okay. And also, I think that triggers a moment for Bunyan and Rulyova where they consider this article anew. Could you give me a psychology role regarding Flight Lieutenant Assistant Professor Charles Lohman and the oh, article that he I mentioned? Would love to. <laughs> you know he's got an article. Oh, that's a really good role. What is my psychology? But you've not seen it. Ooh. I got an 8 on a, a 40. You're pretty sure... You're, 43 on a 50. You're, you're, you're pretty sure... You're Ooh. both pretty sure that he's hiding something. Alagash, you begin to realise that he might, might be hiding something sensitive to himself. Ah, uh, yeah. It's not about... Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. not about Cappy. It's about... It's about the prof. And uh, prof you, LT. you probably interpret that by the fact that I'm getting a bit twitchy yeah. looking through the window. Right, wait, wait. So, uh, like, maybe I maybe I want to speak to him, but also I don't want to speak. Just to him. as that tune finishes I, and another one starts, mm. on the, and he sort of well, he, like, li- he huffles and stuff. Just say, uh, so you you keen on stopping here, Doc, or uh, you want to carry on? Which do you uh, want to do? I mean, it's up to you. You're driving. Well, first of all, it's very kind of you to call me Doc, but uh, <laughs> I haven't got my doctorate yet. Um, Stud, uh, what should I call I, you? I, 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 well, you can call me Chuck. Uh, I think we probably... Established that in the last episode, probably. Good enough, <laughs> good enough friends now. Uh, I, um, I'm not sure this... Uh, I, I don't know how much help these... Uh, I mean, what are we going to do? Go in there and say, so tell us about the, the, the cow you saw in the sky. And as I say that, my eyes sort of yeah. flick up to the sky like a little bit like this and then back down right, again. Quite right, quite right. Well, let's because carry on you're... then. Professor, you're sweating. Uh, are you? Mm. Do you feel it's, okay? I, oh, it's humid this close to the river. I, I, I say maybe we either get back in the car or um, knock on the door, mm. but may, maybe don't hang around here outside the house where That's he it. may may or may not have seen strange things in the sky, you know? Can I, can I, is there anything else near this place? Maybe it's not a spot hidden, but like, because I'm not getting the impression that he's totally like, it's more to do with him and the professor, really. It's like not to do with Cappy, but like, why is he so uncomfortable in this particular area, or is he happy to move on? I don't think he feels exposed in in that sense. Uh, I think it's more that yeah. you, you've suddenly caught on to the fact that there might have been something about this guy in the article that wasn't a hundred percent clear. Right, right, right. Um, it's sort of um, it's, it's partly the the front footedness of the two of you. Have revealed that he's less front foot about it. Yeah. I've sent uh, a message to Natasha Williova just so that you know. <laughs> um, um, in which case, I'm just going to say, uh, well, yeah, 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 I think you're right. Let's get back in. Let's head to the the house. I can drive the last bit if you want. No, no, no. I'm I'm happy driving. It's uh... no, 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 no. I insist. You've been driving us all the way up here. Uh, I I just um, walk over to the driver's door. All right, I am. Um, I scurry back to the car, so sort of backwards glance at the house, backward glance at the sky. I think I catch eyes with Alagash and just go, "Oh my god!" Mm. I do a sort of similar. Um. So yeah. So there was. <laughs> yeah. 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 I mean, he said it. He said it out loud, so that's good. The. Yeah. The last mile 
It's rough going. Could you give me a driving test, please? Fuck's sake, I shouldn't have uh, taken oh, over. Oh, man. That. That's what you right, get here we go. Mix, Where's my drive? Oh, no, it's not you. It's, uh, it's Chuck, isn't it? Oh, no, oh did you, you, he, just, you just he, took he, it. He insisted on driving. I uh. took the car keys. I said, uh, I'll drive the last bit of the way. That's what right. you get for chivalry. I know. Even if it's more controlling behaviour than chivalrous. Um, <laughs> ah. Ironically, the only person with any drive skills hasn't yet driven. <laughs> yeah. So I've got 20 drive auto and I rolled a 95. Ooh. Okay. Yeah. I sense something is about to happen. Yeah. So you hear a terrible sound as a, as a, a pothole approaches and you very sensibly avoid the pothole and, yeah. and as you do you sort of you sort of straighten up as you're avoiding and the right side of your of your car the front wheel just kind of slumps and you hear this kind of awful Oof. like it's screaming slightly and then it sort of pulls through but you you begin to realize that that tire is absolutely done for it. and you've done, you've done some serious damage which will require mechanical engineering Say, uh, it, that sounds like you've done some serious damage to that, that wheel, which might need some uh, mechanical repair. Do you, do you mind to pull over? I'll take a look at that. I ain't done no damage to it. It's uh, damage that was already done to the car, obviously. This Listen, piece of I know my shit. automobile. I don't want to make, I'm not pointing fingers, but I, I know my automobile, and there was no problem with, with that wheel until I you see, hit that pothole. Just let me get out and have a look at it. I'll put it straight. Get out and have a look at it. Get out and fill that pothole in. Fill the pot boys, hole in. Uh, boys, uh, let's not fight. Yeah, you're right, an, you're it right. Was ac- it was accident. Sure, that's what I'm, I'm lo- saying. It was an accident. It threw I'm going to light up my little uh, corn cob pipe and just... It occurs to you that it's probably quicker to walk from here. Uh, to the actual I know it may be quicker to walk from here, but I, I would like to take a look at my car. You would say, I'd like to take a look uh, at my automobile. I think there's probably an hour's daylight left. Well, right. If there's an hour's daylight, I like to spend it making sure that my automobile is in the best possible condition. If you two want to walk up to the cabin, I will fix this car right here and I'll drive up and follow you. Give us the uh, mechanical I repair it was check. Your car. Give us the what check? Mechanical repair. I'm, honestly, if, if they want to walk up to the cabin, they can. I'm not leaving a car here in the middle of the road, in the middle of mm. buttfuck nowhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that is a good description of it as well. Oh, oh, I've, um, I failed. I'm going to push it. <laughs> I love it. It's our first push. I love it. Uh, Tell so, us how. Yeah, exactly. How. I say, um, Alagash, let me have a look in that fishing sack of yours. You got um, you got a, maybe a, a machete or a big, uh, some kind of, like a, I should have, no. damn it, I should have bought that 10-foot pole. <laughs> I, I pull my, my hunting knife out of my, my side holster and I just say, this is all the blades I got. That'll do. So I take that. <laughs> Why? I'm trying to wedge that. Something's stuck and I need to, I can't actually see what I'm doing. So I wedge that in the, like, right in the middle of the um, yeah. sort of axe, where the axle meets the wheel. And I push down hard on it. Nice. <laughs> I like it. Let's have, a, let's have a re-roll. He's done it. Great. So I'm, so I'm also... That's a I'm, 10. That's a, that's a, that's a hard success. A hard He's going to kiss Alagash hard on the mouth. No, not only, not only do you make sure that the wheel is okay, so the wheel isn't damaged. Uh, you just you need to change the tire, which you can do. That one's shot, unfortunately. So you, this is going to be, and because it's such a good roll, I think you do it in double quick time. So it's fifteen minutes. So there's forty five minutes of daylight left, but the crucial roll is: could I get the credit rating on how good a knife that was, as to whether it survived? Oh. Great question. Whether it survived the process. So my credit rating. Because I don't want to. I don't want to put you guys at, on edge or anything. But we're in the kind of knife territory now. Should I roll against Danon's credit rating since I was the one who was? No, it's it's it's. He bought it, so he, we need to know how okay. mu- how much money Alagash Bunyan so, spends uh, on his knives. So it's tricky because I base my credit rating, and Joseph, you're the only one who will fully understand this, on a a, a, a perceived level of income um but obviously it was probably put, different from but, that but, but you I'm didn't put the skill roll. points into it. is that what you're saying is you didn't put the skill points into it 
Well, because you didn't have the skill I points did, left. But they're they're into they're into another character skill points. It's got a bit complex, but I'm just going to roll for my own um, because I'm living the life that I'm living. Um, you live your life. Well, I succeeded. I got a twenty-two on a thirty. Then you're absolutely fine. Yeah, because you couldn't be seen to be having a knife that was actually as valuable as potentially you could I'm not going to have an engraved Japanese sushi knife. You know, I'm going to, you know. Even though perhaps you could buy one if you wanted. (laughs) Maybe I could if I wanted. Maybe he could. Who knows? But yeah, so so there there you are. The knife survives against the odds. I think we'd all agree. Um, yeah, <laughs> and and it's largely wordless. All of this, it's it's, but uh, I think Natasha, you're given a moment to wander up ahead, and you you get the first proper look at the cabin. Uh, it's in a clearing. Uh, it's it's rather handsome. It commands a it commands a little prospect on raised land, um, with dense firs around it, but all at you know some thirty. 30, 40 yards away. So it's it's in a little clearing, which is very nice. It's, it's a really nice, you can imagine it's a nice vacation spot. Um, you can feel the fresh breeze from the lake up above, even though you can't see any of that. Um, uh, and, and the still clear sky is there. With a few clouds off to the east, you can feel that gathering storm still over there, but it's cooler air up here. And is it a two-story house? It is a two. It? It's a two-story. So it's a, it's quite a substantial holiday uh, vacation home. It is a vacation home. It's a cottaging home. Mm. If, you, <laughs> if you pardon the Canadian expression, to go cottaging. <laughs> Easy now. Uh, it's a fact. That's what Canadians call it. This is where people go. We're not that for far from cottaging. the border. We're not that We're far from the border. A spot of cottage. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Cottage the, cheese. He was just up here cottaging. And as you're standing there commanding this view and the first to see it, uh, you're the first one to spot the doors because you just happen to be on that the angle as the sun is going down steadily. You get the last of the light on two doors banked into the earth, uh, but connected to the building, but banked into the earth at a storm shelter angle or a root cellar angle, as you would perchance believe it to be. From the old country, yes. Indeed. And I think maybe for a moment you just remember that figure standing in the woods that you thought you saw, the advisor to the Tsarina. And you remember his burning eyes. And there's just some fragment, a psychic fragment of that kind of power is there. And it's as if you're being watched. You can't shake the feeling for a few seconds and then it's gone. So great, you bring the car up, gentlemen. Uh, mm. Flight Lieutenant Assistant Professor Charles Chuck Lohman and uh, Lobster Mogul Alagash Bunyan. You drive up and you see the, the tall, slim figure of postmistress Natasha Rulyova standing on the left side female, of the road. Female postmaster. Female postmaster, <laughs> thank you for the correction <laughs> and apologies. I felt that it was wrong as it was coming out, as, as mm. so many... I've said it before, you. Yes. <laughs> uh, so, the gentlemen, you begin to see some of what uh, Rulyova's been uh, taking in, if that's uh, an expression mm. that I can oh use. It seems God. inappropriate now. <laughs> I was going to say drinking <laughs> in, and I stopped saying drinking in. Uh, so uh, this 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 house commands a little. She's bit not of... drinking her own moonshine as well, is she? Uh, yeah, well, potato from maybe a it's just a fumes from Cappy's pants. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? Who knows? And there is a good moon up there tonight. Maybe Loman's conscious of the moon above him. Oh, like so many men before. <laughs> <laughs> the, ca- uh, uh, you, the car beautifully fixed, as we've said, as we've established, beautifully mechanically repaired, mm. uh, purrs to a halt. Um, Buster wags his tail and, and leaps up in the back seat, looking interested, <laughs> sniffing away, uh, and, and transferring his affections both from uh, Bunyan, his master, to Loman, who is his care, of course, in charge. He is, mm-hmm. He's still interested in the mental health of Charles Doug <laughs> Loman. He wants to protect uh, this, this, mm. this, poor, this, this poor man seeking tenure. He's got a far better psychology than I do. 
Oh, absolutely. I mean, who can really who can really tell what's going on in a dog's mind? Eh? But I think Buster, um, like the rest of you, is very aware of this tranquil scene. The sun, the sun is streaming through the woods, casting wonderful shadows deeper, deeper in. And you too, gentlemen, pick up the scent of that fresh air from the lake above. Uh, and, and, and welcome to the house in the woods. Uh, you've got here. You've made it. Give me a 